Yo, Elliot, I need some advice on my relationship. My wife and I are a great team. We've got four kids and we keep them busy. We work opposite schedules so they never have to be watched by anyone, which is nice. However, I feel a lack of respect from my wife and I feel it's my fault. We had some very bad fights over the year 2020, and I said some messed up things to her and even left the house without coming home a couple of nights. The fights have been over the lack of sex in our relationship. Our last big fight, she said she was done and did not want to be the reason I am not happy due to our lack of intimacy. She's been having a hard time because of a varicose vein in her vagina she had when she was pregnant with my five-year-old son. It's gone now, and the doctor says it's in her head. But every time we try, it hurts her. The therapist says she has PTSD from us trying when she uh, had the vein. The issue we are having now is that during our last fight a few months ago, she said she was leaving. And at first, I said, go ahead. But when I realized she was serious, I begged for her to stay so we don't lose our family. She agreed to stay and three months later, no fighting, but still no sex. And to top it off, the worst part is she now has the power. Every time I mention my lack of sex, she tells me I begged her to stay. What do I do now? She's good to me in every other way but the sex. And I truly don't want to separate from my kids. I feel the shift as if I want her more than she wants me because I came off so weak by begging for her to stay. So I'm gonna open by saying, I really do hope and pray that your family does work out. And it seems like you have a great family, my man. It seems like you and your wife are a great team and that you're taking care of your kids. And as you say, in every other way, she's fulfilling her obligations as a wife. Uh, you as well seem to be uh, doing everything that you can in order to fulfill your role as a husband. And so I say that to sort of uh, open up a sense of hope and also a sense of, you know, you're doing the right thing. But this is a legitimate struggle. It's a legitimate complaint and it's something that does need to be dealt with. And so I will preface what I'm going to share with you by saying that there's been a loss of the true contract that marriage was meant to be. And it's probably been a result of feminism, where we've lost the, uh, the, the true sense of what a man and woman becoming one flesh really means. And there's a lot of depth to that saying, right? When a man leaves his parents and joins to a woman, they become one flesh. We really do become one flesh. And in that one flesh, there is an exchange. There is a required exchange that we agree to, particularly when we get married. And that exchange is this. And, you know, I'm going to say this and a lot of people are going to be like, whoa, no one's ever told me this. But if you do your research, if you look a little deeper, if you understand what the marriage covenant was designed for and why it's that way, you'll see that it's the perfect order. There's a requirement of the wife and there's a requirement of the husband. Let's talk very quickly about the requirement for the wife because she is the gateway to the conjugal right. The conjugal right is a right. It's a legitimate right. That's why it's called the right. If you do some Google and look up conjugal rights, that means that when we get married, my body no longer belongs to me and your body no longer belongs to you. I have rights over your body and you have rights over my body. What does that mean for the man? When a woman has rights over your body, that means you agree not to have sex outside of the marriage. When it really boils down to it, that's what it is. Not that she has rights to your body to whoop you or you to beat her or to push each other around or to make each other do other things that are not a part of the conjugal right. It is all about sex. And so generally speaking for the man, because the man is the, is the one that needs sex a little bit more, right? It, it, for a man, sex is love. It's a little different from a woman, and that's not to say that they don't feel love during sex, but when a woman yields to, opens up to, and receives a man, just by mere virtue of laying back and spreading her legs, she's, she's offering love. That's the love. The love the love part 
when it comes from the woman to the man is respect. I was thinking about this the other day. It's really interesting because in our culture, they say there's a there's a saying that they use over and over again. Especially when you're young, they say respect girls, respect women. But that's not true, and that's not biblical. That's backwards. According to Saint Paul, respect and it, it makes perfect sense. Respect moves up, love moves down. And if you understand the natural order, the man is the head of his wife, meaning he's the leader. He's the head, right? Like we were talking earlier about the, the logical and the emotional and why the logical needs to stay sharp and in charge so that the emotional could express itself and, and, and be, be well acknowledged, but under the mantle of the thought, the, the, the brain, the logic. The man is the head of the wife. And so as is in, if you just look at it this way, the military, right? I know people do not, we don't like hierarchy in our society, even though hierarchy is a natural thing. It's supposed to be that way. Even us as humans, we respond, behave. We're well-ordered when there's hierarchy. There should be hierarchy, right? Again, a lot of people will argue with that because they, we don't like the sound of that. But unfortunately, it's true. The military, for example, right? Or a corporation, for example. But the family is a mini corporation. The family is a mini church. The family is a mini military, if you will. Respect moves up. So parent, children, respect your parents. This is one of the commandments. And then St. Paul says, wives, respect your husbands. Respecting in that way means I respect his request. I respect his approach. In fact, if I don't respect his approach, I'm breaking our contract. Love flows down. Have you ever heard this? That love is gravity. Love is gravity. So love is brought, it comes down from the father through the son and then into the family. You're the son. You're God's son. So God, Christ, man, woman, children. Love goes this way. And love is, love is different in respect in that love, to love down means I don't need you, but I love you so I will Provide, protect, care for, be patient with you. Respect, on the other hand, means I need you, so I'm going to yield to you. The children need the parents. Now, we live in a world, of course, where even in the family, there's no hierarchy because the children rule. We live in a topsy-turvy world where the children rule. Thus, the mother is ahead of the father because the mother is, most, uh, is, is in most closer contact with the child. So then the father's on the bottom, the children are on the top, and the woman is, and it's, it's completely backwards, topsy-turvy. The right way is respect, children respect the mother, and the mother respects the father. And the children respect the father because the mother respects the father. So it goes up, it goes up that way. The father, on the other hand, because biologically we are stronger, we have more options, men are actually the prize. We're the ones that choose relationships. Notice this, women choose who they have sex with, men choose who they have relationships with. This is very important because for a man to open up the gates to relationship means that he's willing to take on the care of his wife and his child. So let's go back, let's go back to what is required, right? We talk about, we talk about uh, love and we talk about respect. Respect goes up, love comes down. Uh, you even say she doesn't respect you. And if she's not having sex with you, she doesn't respect you. But it goes two ways. In or it goes There's a lot to it here. In order for her to respect you, you have to be respectable. And according to this paradigm that I'm sharing with you as it relates to traditional marriage, her right, right? Now, your right is her respect and love. And, I'm sorry, and sex. Her right is to be provided for and protected. That means that if you're having sex with your wife and making babies, it's her right to not have to work outside the home. Did you know that? That it is a, it's your wife's right not to work outside the home. She should not have to have a job because that is an unfair burden on her. Why should she receive your seed, bear your children, care for them, but then also have to work outside the home to make money. No, even if you have to work four jobs, it is your responsibility, just like it's her responsibility, even if her vagina don't feel so good that day, to spread open and receive, 
it is your responsibility to provide and protect. And the whole protect thing is a spiritual protection that is available when we're living in the right order. And there's so much more to it. So your wife not respecting you may have something to do. Now, of course, we want to approach the situation where she's having pain. But I'm not sure that's all, all it's cracked up to be. I'm, I'm thinking there may be a little bit more because a woman will have sex with a man she wants to have sex with, right? Even if she's, if she's given the opportunity, right, based on the law of hypergamy, right? Even if a woman doesn't want to have sex but she has an opportunity to have sex with a man that she's attracted to, she will have sex. She will have sex, even if it hurts, right? Like if, I don't know, who, who's like an alpha uh, Hollywood actor, right? Brad Pitt. If Brad Pitt shows up at your house and, and has dinner and has a couple glasses of wine and you leave and he starts coming on to your wife, she will want to have sex with him. Whether she does or not is a different story, but she'll want to because it's like, oh my God, it's Brad Pitt. This is an opportunity I may never get again, right? So the opening is there, but she doesn't have the same feeling towards you that she would to a man that she respects. So what we need to do here, right? And I've got a lot that I want to unpack for you here as it relates to how to regain that respect from your wife. And that respect, once again, leads to attraction. You got to, you have to, you have to, gain back your wife's attraction. So let me share a little bit about what I think would repair the situation and, and have her respect you and be attracted to you in a brand new way. Number one, I, I'm not telling you what to do, I'm just telling you based on this perspective why things go sour. When a woman who has lots of children is forced to work outside the home, she hardens up, right? Her utility is being exploited, right? She's having sex, she's making babies. That's her main utility and it's being exploited. But she's not getting in return what she's owed. And whether or not this was explicit when you guys got married or whether or not it's explicit when most people get married because they just don't know, the fact is that there's a natural law there that requires that she not be forced into a masculine role outside the home. Right? So I don't know what it is that you need to do or how, how things need to unfold, but just keep in your mind, right? You don't have to do anything. Just keep in your mind that a part of the reason why the roles will reverse is because she's forced to step into a masculine role in your relationship. She's forced to do things that are against the covenant, against the contract. And as a result, she can grow animosity unfortunately. And she may not be conscious of it, but there's a, there may be a sense of animosity towards you because she's having to do more than she's expected to do. And as a result, that animosity is causing her to not want to do what is her real job. Her real job is to have sex, just like your real job is to provide. So that's, that, lays the that lays the framework for the intersexual dynamic in the home. That, needs, that just needs to be addressed. I don't know if you need to do, do anything about it, but that, that needs to be addressed, right? Women who work outside the home are more masculine than women who are inside the home because they're more stressed out, because they have more things to do. That being said, not sure, not sure you know, what you need to do about that, but just keep that in your mind. Over the course of a year, and you're going to slowly implement this plan that I'm going to lay out for you. And I'll even give you resources as to how to execute this plan. So that over the course of a year, you need time, you need time, you need time to heal this split, right? And maybe things in the work situation change, but it's not your, that's not your job right now. That would be the fruit of how you execute this plan. Before I share the resource and the steps that you have to take, the very first thing that you need to do is to stop fighting with her. That's super, super important. Stop fighting with her and stop needing her sex. Now you need her sex. I understand that you need her sex, but if she knows you need her sex and you become gr grumpy, argumentative, and fight with her as a result, that's not going to help you at all. 
because she's going to rationalize away why she should do or not do what she wants to do because you're not acting like a man. And a woman does not want to be with a man that argues like a woman, right? Do not argue with your wife. Do not argue with women. When she gets into this place or you're noticing things that you want and she's not giving, do not fight with her. Do not engage with her and do not let on any longer that you are upset because you're not getting sex. That's a part of the power play because if she knows you're upset, she's got you by the balls, right? I, whenever there's emotional content associated with a, with a disagreement or a confrontation with two people, the person that becomes emotional about it is the person that is losing because as, as soon as you are emotionally unhinged, that person's living rent-free in your head. That person becomes your puppet master because what I say about emotions before, you're much more easily manipulated when you're emotional. Right. So you have to make sure that you don't engage in the emotional battle with her. Detach and start to say to yourself, I don't need her sex. I don't need your sex. I am strong enough without your sex. Right. Because really, the bottom line is you don't need her sex. You do not need her sex. If everything else in your relationship is going fine and you're not having sex, your relationship can be just fine if you don't need her sex. Right. And so I'm not saying that. That's a fun thing to go through or an easy thing to go through, but it's the way you establish dominance in the relationship. It's the way you establish dominance in that confrontation is that, okay, I don't, I don't need your sex, right? Everything else is cool. Everything else is fine. Everything that we do is normal, but I'm not in need of your sex because the person that needs is the person that's at the whim of the person that holds that which they need. So you got to be able to detach yourself from that. I'd like to share a resource with you, right? It's called the, me let me pull it up right here. It's a, it's an ebook. It's called saving a low sex marriage by the blue pill professor. Highly recommend that book. And I, I highly suggest that you go and get that and read that book. It's available on Kindle. And it will, it will save you a lot of heartache and it gives you a plan of action on how to reestablish your frame and get your wife to be attracted to you again. Because that's really the issue. She's not attracted to you. If she's attracted to you, she will, know, she will very happily have sex with you, right? So there's a 12-step plan, right? It's called the 12-step plan of dread. Recovering from a low sex marriage, restoring sex, and restoring respect. Justin, I see that you're responding here also. And you say that you make enough for your bills, but she makes more than you. And if she makes more than you, I, bro, there's no two ways around it. If she makes more money than you, she, there's, she's top dog in the hierarchy. Not only does she have access to the sex, which you're needing, she has accesses, access to more resources. And that will allow her to have a bigger ego because she thinks that you don't need her. She don't need you. The person in a relationship that doesn't need the other person is the one that's in charge. Right? And you're showing that you're the needy partner, right? Through the sex and then through, you know, her making more money. Even if you don't consciously believe that you need her, by virtue of her making more money than you, gives her a sense that I don't need this dude. In fact, he needs me, right? This is all unconscious. So I, that's something that you might want to work out. So, 12-step plan of dread, recovering from a low sex marriage, restoring sex, restoring respect. Number one, this is your life. This is something that you got to remember, that this is your life, and she is an addition to your life. This is the paradigm. This is the mindset. This is actually the way it is, but we've been brainwashed, tricked, bamboozled up out of this. So, with that you got to remember, you are a man descended from 10,000 generations of warriors, poets, and kings. Start acting like it. Begin responding to your wife confidently and appropriately, right? Which again, once again, means don't argue with her. Do not argue with her. Do not fight with her. Do not need her sex. I want to, I'm all over the place again today. It's just one of those weird days. I also want to show here, I want to also show this. I, wanna, I have to point this out. Sex today, as we have it through contraception, destroys families. Contraception destroys families. Because you're hoping to have sterile sex with her. 
And prior to the 1960s and birth control pills or getting your balls cut off or whatever it is that you're using in order to have contraception meant that sex was, sex was much more respected, right? The, so, sex was much more respected because you knew and she knew that if I take my husband's advances, right? And I, I should not turn his advances away, but we have to both be more discerning about it. I may end up having another baby. Right. But because that's out of the way, now sex is really actually meaningless and it's actually kind of a selfish act because it's like now I need to get off by blowing my load in you. But there's no responsibility. There's no repercussion. So the entire sex act has lost its meaning. It's lost its significance. It's lost its power. I started thinking about this when I started really just being objective about my sexual relationship with my wife. And I began to realize that any hangups that I have as it relates to sex is false because it's built on a paradigm of lies. Having sex and using contraception is not conjugal rights. It's not real sex. It's sex entertainment, right? So... I'm not asking you to do anything or make any decision, decisions based on that, but that's something that I've been thinking about recently I've been, or lately, you know, the past couple of years, I've been thinking about this. I'm like, look, if we were doing things the way they were supposed to be done and we're not having sterile sex, then there would be a whole different angle that we'd be looking at sex through. It would be far more respected. It would probably be far less having sex. And there would be much more association with it, right? There'd be much more, responsible, more responsibility with it. So you know what I started thinking? And this is really important because this is a part of what will save your marriage also, right? I'm all over the place. Sorry. This is one of those videos, one of those days. I started imagining, I started thinking, okay, because look, I have sterile sex with my wife too. I'm not calling you out. I'm not calling us out. I'm calling me out. I'm calling, I'm calling everybody out who does this. I have Sterile sex because I sterilized myself, right? I didn't, you know, this was like 15 years ago. I don't know what the fuck I was doing. You know, I was dumb. I was blue pilled. So I was like, I'm going to sterilize myself. I probably wouldn't do it again today. But I started thinking in terms of, okay, the amount of times I want to have sex with my wife with zero consequences means that I'm chasing a false coin. I'm chasing something fake. I'm behaving in a way that is unnatural wanting to have all this sex with no repercussions, no responsibility. So then I started with that space, that objectivity, being honest with myself about should I have sex with my wife right now? Now, this is for all of us. This is for everybody, not just you. But should I? Men don't think about that, right? Now, this is something that may empower you also. You got to ask yourself, and men, all of us need to ask ourselves, if we're having sterile sex with our wives and the responsibility that would be associated with us being in our natural state, should I be having sex with my wife? And a lot of the times, you would you would have, you'd be honest with yourself and be like, yeah, I probably shouldn't have sex with her right now. Because if I'm going to blow my load and she's going to have another baby, that may, be, may, not, may not be the best course of action for us right now. Right? With that being said, Carezza sex. You got you to gotta learn Carezza sex. You got to learn how to have sex without blowing your load. That's important too. Because part of the reason why women don't want to have sex is because their husbands ejaculate and they get nothing out of it. If we're ejaculating, she's making babies, and she doesn't get the delight that she wants out of her orgasm, then she's not going to want to have sex with you also too. It doesn't mean that it's right for her to withhold it, but she's not going to have attraction because she doesn't have this... this hankering for amazing orgasms for my husband. One of the things I want to throw out there before I proceed is that it's very important to learn how to control your ejaculate. You got to be able to control your ejaculation. I guarantee you that a man who's having sexual struggles with their wife because their wife doesn't want to have sex is probably because he's a premature ejaculator and she's not getting what she wants out of it. So, Regardless of right or wrong, she's not going to want to have sex. Imagine you have sex. I, I can't even, there's no, there's no relation, actually. Let me stop that because men and women are different. What we do need to do is not need to have orgasms. What we need to do is prolong our sex to a degree that allows her to get every orgasm she wants out of it. This is what I've been doing with my wife lately. When she is ovulating, right, because that's when a woman wants to have her sex, 
I make it a point not to blow my load and I give her as much time. I give her everything she needs so she's fully satisfied. If you start having sex with your wife, not blowing your load, lasting as long as you need to so that she can get whatever she wants, she'll warm up, she'll soften up, she'll start having orgasms and craving your sex. That's a part of the reason, you know, I'm not saying that this is that you need to take this into consideration, but it's part of the reason why a lot of women don't want to have sex with their husbands because their husbands aren't laying it down. They're not laying the pipe. They're not digging her out. They're not giving her what she wants, right? So a lot of cold women who are, who are cold with regard to sex, it's not that they're cold, it's they've never been warmed up. You got to warm her up. You got to, and you, and you do that over the course of the day. You got to warm your woman up by touching her all day long, kissing her all day long, not with a need, not with any of your needs. There's a desire. You have a desire, but shift your desire from I need to blow my load to I want to please you. I want to give you so you will never be denied sex if you give your wife all the orgasm she wants. Right. You will, not be de- you will not be denied sex if she's getting what she wants every time. And like I said in a previous video, the burden of performance is always on the man, and I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing for us to be, have the burden of performance in this regard. Give her orgasms till she can't handle no more, right? So that's really important. So number one, remember, you're the man, you're the prize, she's lucky to have you. And that relates to everything from the way you carry yourself, the way you look, the muscles on your body, the money you make, your status, and how you lay the pipe. Number two, this is your plan. Life is your plan. You are a man with a plan. So get this one and get working on it. Put together a man action plan and start to build by building muscles at the gym and reading books and blog entries. Take notes and understand them. Write out your complete man action plan and start your new life today. So in other words, you have to be on your purpose. You have to be on your grind. You have to know what you're up to as a man outside, not even outside of, but not including her. She can't be the center of your life, right? And I got to be honest, I went and I looked at your Facebook profile. You have a beautiful family, a beautiful family, man. I, I mean, God bless you. And it seems like things are going well, except for the sex thing. And a part of the sex thing, the problem is the lack of polarity between you and your wife. And one of the very, very first things I noticed when I looked at your profile picture is that she's front and center. Just check out your profile picture on, on, on Facebook, bro. Go and look at what message is being portrayed when she's front and center. It's your Facebook profile, right? And this is, you know, this may seem like, oh, Elliot, what's the big deal? No, it means a lot. What profile you put on Facebook is your avatar. Your avatar is something that represents who you are. And what's represented in that picture is she's all up and she's and looking pretty and you're behind her like this. That's basically saying to the world, look how important my wife is. Look how beautiful my wife is. Look how I put her in front of me and I'm just back here. That is a recipe for depolarized relationships. Not the other way around, in fact. When the woman does, puts the man, but when the man puts a woman in front, it depolarizes because a woman, a woman wants a man that's better than her. That's why the whole hypergamy thing works, works out. Brad Pitt walks into your house, she's going to have sex with him because she wants a man that's better than him. But a man that thinks she's better than him because he puts her on a pedestal is a man she's going to lose respect for very quickly. She's going to lose respect for you. You, I would say, you, one of the first things you do, go change your profile picture and put you in front, <laughs> put you in front of, of her. Dread level three, your great mission. You're a man in charge with a busy, fun, active life. Get a hobby, some solid friends and goals and a mission in life. The whole thing is you got to start acting like a man, behaving like a man, hanging out with man, having a life outside of her as a man. She needs to, she needs to understand And you need to understand that she can't be the center of your life, especially in this regard, right? Especially if things are so depolarized, right? Especially if she's higher up on the totem pole than you in this backwards relationship. You got to be a man on a mission. Dread level four, your options and your consequences. You're a busy man with options and you don't have time for negative influences such as a wife who's not attractive to you, right? So that's level four. 
Level five, you're a hot guy. Look the part. Upgrade your wardrobe. Start dressing a little bit nicer, even at home, especially when you're out in public. Dread level six, you're a mighty hunter. Study your prey. Begin to study pickup artistry. Leave books of PUA, P-U-A, pickup artistry, around the house and practice actively gaming and seducing your wife. This is super important, man. This is one of the things that I started to do when I became privy to this to this red pill awakening, right? Intersexual dynamics, if we're going to be completely honest. I have no problems with my wife, but I don't want to create any problems with my wife, and I want to be 10 steps ahead of my wife. So as a result, I study seduction. I've studied seduction. How can I be seductive with my wife? How can I keep my wife interested in me? How can I use pickup and red pill tools not to pick up other women, but to be with my wife, right? I'm still gaming my wife sometimes, right? And there's a lot of different aspects of that. But gaming your wife is a beautiful thing because it means you're still dating her. It means you still behave towards her like you're dating her, like you want her to be attracted to you. A lot of times we get lazy in our relationship when we hope things are just going to be the way they, uh, way they were in the beginning. But the burden of performance is on the man, so you got to stay on top of your game, bro. And now when I say game, I mean literal game, right? The game. Gaming women, right? And that's what they call it. I'm not a fan of that because, I, you know, I don't, I don't run game, but I try to be seductive. I'm seductive with my wife, the way I touch her, the way I talk to her, some of the things I say. You know what? Sometimes... I dress a different way. Y'all see me dress the same way all the time. But I'll dress a different way. Look, notice I cut my mustache off. Look, I cut my mustache and my beard. I had it for over a year, right? I knew that if I cut my mustache and my beard, my wife would be, she would swoon. Oh, you're so handsome, right? Because she hated my beard. I didn't cut my beard off because of her. I cut it off because I was ready for a new look. But for two years, I looked ugly. And you know what I knew in my head? If I cut this beard off, my wife is going to, she's going to like it. Right. And I walked out with my beard cut off. All of a sudden, she's like, oh, my goodness, I have a sexy man. Mm -mm -mm. She's doing all that. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm smiling and I'm nodding my head. I'm like, yeah, damn right. Because I know I'm a good looking guy. And every once in a while, like he's saying in the book, I dress up a little differently, make myself look a little bit better. Sharpen myself up. Right. You're always in the gym. You're always growing stronger. You're always being sexy. You got to be a sexy guy, right? <laughs> right? You got to be strong. You got to be handsome. You got to carry yourself well. You can't expect that your wife is just going to be attracted to you, right? Even if she gives you sex, right? Even if a woman gives you sex out of obligation, which for most men, it's like, okay, well, that's good enough for me. That's not good enough for me. I don't want my wife to give me sex out of obligation. She will sometimes if she's not into it and I am, but... I want my wife to want me, right? And how do you get your wife to want you? By being an attractive dude. You gotta be an attractive dude. So there's 12 steps. That was step number six. Number seven, begin to practice your, uh, oh, I already said it. Step, yeah, step number seven, begin to practice, pick up artistry on random women who draw your attention. Practice makes perfect, but be aware this is a very dangerous step. Don't fail to test and cheat. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more or six more steps I'm not even going to get into because hopefully you don't get that far. Number seven is pushing the line, right? Because number eight is demonstrate. You don't want to get there. And the guy that writes his book, he warns you. He's got like a whole chapter on warning you about using these steps and don't go too fast. Don't be too aggressive. Don't be too obvious. You got to read the book and understand what he's saying, right? Again, I'm not the expert here, but I'm sharing information that I learned and practiced myself so that I can help you guys out. So with the with those final that I'm going to stop at number seven, because then it starts escalating into ultimatums, soft ultimatums, hard ultimatums, uh, so on and so forth that you don't even want to get into. You don't want to get past level seven. Level seven is just this. All it is is... Your wife should know that you're attractive to other women, right? Women want to have sex with women. Or, or women want to have sex with men that other women want to have sex with, right? Your wife will want to have sex with you if she knows the neighbor finds you attractive. If the girl that's serving you at the table finds you attractive. If whatever, at the supermarket, they find you attractive. Wherever it is, wherever you're going. 
And it doesn't even mean that, you know, these are girls that are eyeing you through the corner of their eye and they're drooling over you. It just means that you could be charismatic enough to carry on a conversation with a pretty girl. Not with the goal of making your wife jealous per se, but just making her aware that, look, I am a desirable man. If you don't desire me, there's something wrong with you because other women desire me. And it's important for, I think it goes both ways. But I think it's important for partners, husband and wives, to maintain their polarity by keeping up with their appearance so that there's this sense that, wow, men find my wife attractive. That means I better stay on my A game. Or women find my man attractive. That means I've got to stay on my A game. People in relationships behave better when they know that their partner is attractive because there's this latent sense that I could lose him. Right. And you don't want she don't want to lose you. And you don't I know you don't want to lose her. So you don't go any further than step seven. Read the book. Get to step 12. But like he warns and I'm warning you here, too. It, the first seven steps are about you. It's all about you. Establish your mission. Establish your path. Get in the gym. Grow some muscles. Buy some new clothes. One of the things that I don't want to say is going to freak her out. You don't want to freak her out. But one of the things that's going to pique her interest is if you start buying some new clothes and dressing a little differently, right? Stop wearing a baseball cap all the time. Get your hair hooked up a little bit, right? I remember O.E. from six months ago? Big beard, bald head, right? I know that's not the most attractive Elliot. <laughs> I know that's not the most attractive me. And I'm not. I'm maybe like 85% there yet because I still got a puffy face, right? But once I slim down a little bit, you know what you're going to see? Elliot from 2013, 14, 15, right? Because I know how to be attractive. And I'm saying you know how to be attractive also. Which means, go get a haircut, go shave, buy some new clothes, get in the gym. Now, you also have the obligation to show her that your time is important for you, to you, and that you're not going to waste your time in situations and with people, her, that don't value your time. And so one of the things he suggests is that you find some male friends. Join a baseball league or a basketball league, right? Go hang out with your buddies, not at the bar drinking and being a degenerate like that, but you're out in social circles, social uh, situations, right? Join a country club and go play golf, whatever, whatever thing may be. She needs to have this sense that, well, my man is busy. My man's up to something. He's doing things. Yeah. BJJ four times a week is great, right? And maybe expand on that a little bit by going out with your BJJ buddies, right? Say, so, you know, they going out and they're, you know, they're doing stuff. They're going fishing. They're going hunting. Go do stuff with your boys. Go find guy friends. That's important too. So this is a long video and there's a whole lot that has been uh, spilled out here and through this video. But to come full circle, your, your problem is legit, but I think your family deserves that the two of you work this out. You can't expect her to do anything. I don't want to sound like these, you know, psychologists that, you know, these marriage counselors by saying it's your fault, but in a way it is because you lost your frame. Marriage counselor is going to tell you you need to listen to your wife more and do what she tells you. What I'm saying is stop listening to your wife and do what you want to do. That way you build back your frame. When I say do what you want to do, I don't mean go cheat on her. What I mean is start living your life on your terms and doing things that you want to do outside of her so that she starts to look at you very differently. Not that she's so that she doesn't look at you like this guy needs me and that he's my beta orbiter simp that I that you know I happen to have babies with. And then of course, you know, the whole dynamic with regard to responsibilities within the marriage covenant, sex and provisions. So that's it. You know, there was a lot there. This video will probably have to be edited a bunch because I got cut off a bunch of times, but Bottom line is, I think these, I think things will work out for you, bro. Read the book, read the book, read the book, Blue Pill Professor, and start developing that plan. It's a 12-step plan to win your wife back. Start developing that plan. Take your time with it. You don't want to go so quickly that you push her away, but you want to start establishing yourself in your own frame once again like you did before you, before you even got married, bro. So that's all I got to say on that. Hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip 
from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.